Let's make a digital mosaic using Google Draw. The first thing you want to do when you open up Google Draw is to label your project. Title it with your name and the object that you want to draw so it's easily be able to find in Google Drive. Then you want to search what image you want to do and copy your image. Go back to your Google Drawing and paste it in. Click on Edit, Paste. Now you want to expand your image as big as you can in the box of the Google Drawing. Click on a corner and drag it so that way it covers all of the checkerboard screen. Then you want to crop your image so that way it's closer. Some of your images might fill the whole screen, but mine didn't. Mine was mostly the background. So I cropped the corners of my images so that way I can expand it a little bit bigger. Once you move the sides and the corners closer to your image, click the enter button and it will crop the image. Now you want to expand your image so that way it takes up the space as much as it can. I have a lot of negative space on the side and that's okay. I just want to make sure my image is as big as it can be in this box. Next you're going to click on select line. Go down to polyline. This is the shape tool we're going to use to make our digital mosaic. Next we're going to zoom in. Go to the magnifying glass and click on 200. You can scroll to get to what part of the picture you want to start with first. I like to start with the face. Click on polyline. You want to make sure that the select button is not highlighted. And then you're ready to make your first shape. So you're going to click and then move your mouse and click again and that will make another line. So it's click, move, click, move until you get to make a shape. Click on the pencil and that's border color. We want to make sure that this is transparent. Then you can click on the fill color bucket and change the color too. After you finish your shape, you do not have to click on the polyline again, otherwise it clicks on the selection tool. It's already highlighted, so it's great, you could just make your next shape. If you see that the selection tool gets highlighted, no big deal, you could just click on the polyline and you're ready to make your next shape. So go close to the shape that you just made and start making your new polyline shape. When you're first starting off and you make your shapes, sometimes when you change the color you realize that it's too far away from the other shape, and that's okay. You can delete this and start again. So click on the selection tool and click on the delete button and then you can make a new shape. So once you delete it, you'll go back to polyline and make a new line shape. If the shape doesn't work out the way you want it, you can always just click on the delete button and try again. When you use the selection tool to delete something, it does get rid of your preferences of keeping the borderline transparent. Click back on the pencil and make sure that you change it back to transparent and that will save for the next shape when you make the next one right after. Feel free to click on the magnifying glass and zoom in a little bit more than 200%. This will be easier to do details such as the eyes and the nose. For the eye, I just copied the same shape as best I could using the polyline. I used black to fill in the eyes and the nose so that way it would stand out since the rest of the body is colorful. As you're coloring in your shapes, you use a range of colors. So I use the lightest colors and then four levels down. But you can always use the brighter colors too, that first line of colors, in yours as well. As you're making your shapes, you can keep coloring them and changing the color as you go, or I'm going to show you a different way you can do this. You can always just keep making all of the shapes, make them all one color, and then go back and change them. So you can do this section by section, or do your entire animal, and then go back and just fill in all the colors at the end. It's really up to you. For the details of the nose and the mouth, I kept them both black for the shapes, and then went around them with color. Here you can see I made a bunch of shapes the same color and then went back and changed the color. I would try both ways and see which way you like best. I wound up doing my whole project in one color and going back and changing the colors. That way I could keep my mind on the color palette and what colors I've used and what colors I still needed to use to add to my project. Feel free when you finish a big section to zoom out and look at your work zoom out to like 100% or 200 and you can see your progress and then get back to work. I filled in my shapes throughout the whole entire project and then went back and just concentrated on filling it in with different colors and adding variety to my picture. If you have sections of your picture where you're 
object overlaps, such as right here where the legs of the horse look like it's touching but one is behind and one's in front. I kept one of the legs a lighter palette and one of them a little bit of a darker palette. So you can always do things like that. I did this with the mane and the horse's tail as well. Once you're finished the last pieces of your digital mosaic, zoom out to fit the page and look at your work. You're going to click on your original picture that you copied on top and you're going to delete it and see your work. These look so awesome. Now we're going to add a background. Click on shapes and click on the first square shape tool. You're going to cover the whole screen with this shape. So cover the whole checkerboard with this shape. Then go to the fill tool, click on black or white. Then right click, click on order, send to back. And now you're completely finished your digital mosaic. I cannot wait to see what you've created. Thank you.